Hello, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Jacqueline Boyd, and I'm the founder of The Care Plan. At this company, we have the honor of partnering with individuals and families to manage health and aging challenges. The relationships we have with our clients are often very personal because of the nature of our work. We have the opportunity to help people understand what's happening with their loved one, how to get the help they need, and sometimes we stay involved with regular visits and in-person support. We get to know people really well, and this relieves the burden of stress and anxiety from the caregiver. They rest easy knowing that an expert is in their corner, advocating on their behalf. In the course of my career, I've interacted with thousands of families, and I thought it was time to do a video on what happens when you no longer are the caregiver. How do you recover from that experience? It's really common for people to have a variety of feelings when their loved one transitions. Now by a transition, I can mean anything from someone else taking over the caregiving responsibilities or your loved one going into a, a long-term care facility like a nursing home or the person passing away. Regardless of the type of transition, there's often an internal shift that happens for the caregiver. It's natural to feel everything from grief or loss to even relief, to a sense of wondering what your next step should be, what your new purpose is, or feeling unmoored. After you've spent so much energy on the well-being of another person, there's in some ways a, a vacuum that can be created or a space that's needed to be filled. It can take a long time to fill in that space in your life and even longer to find new direction. Here's a few reminders to help you along that journey. The first is to be kind to yourself. There's no right way to heal. There's no time frame. There's no guidebook. Every person's experience is individual, depending on your relationship with the person you are caring for, where you're at in your life, what your capacity is. Just be kind to yourself. And that leads to our second step, which is take all the time you need. I say that there's no right way to heal because there's a million ways to recover from grief. There's a million ways to recover from a transition and a major life shift. Our society doesn't put a lot of focus on aging. We don't talk about caregivers in a, in a practical and authentic way. And then when that period is over, there's almost no aftercare that can happen. There's very few support systems for people who are, who are post caregiving. And so, so it's important to make sure that you're taking care of yourself in that process. The third reminder for today is to talk about it. Silence does not equal strength. Talk with the people in your life who get it, who maybe were caregivers themselves or have lost a loved one. Don't be afraid to keep talking. The loss is yours. Others in your life may be focused on different issues, get distracted and forget to check in. It doesn't mean they don't care. Keep processing your grief if that's what feels good to you or what feels comforting to you. Our fourth reminder is to seek support. If your feelings prevent normal functioning, get help. Don't wait. Sometimes talking to our friends or our family isn't going to do the trick. We may need an external perspective, ideas, or caretaking of ourselves to be able to see the light. Whether that's support groups or medical consultation or getting involved in new activities or communities, there may be something outside of yourself that's needed to help you recover from the loss that you've experienced. It's also really important to celebrate the person. For those times when people have passed beyond our sight or when we're losing them slowly, it's important for your own well-being to stay connected to who that person was and their place in your life. Remember the good times, not just the times that were about the care relationship. Remember the primary relationship and what drew you together and connected you in the first place. And then our final reminder for today is to create new traditions. If your loved one has moved into a nursing home, maybe it's an opportunity to create holiday celebrations that happen in the nursing home with them so that they can feel engaged and supported. Maybe you set a weekly visit that's just social where you go and read to your loved one or you, um, you share photos of times that you've spent together. If you have lost someone and if they're no longer with you when you want them to be there, 
Maybe you have your own private memorial service or prayer service, or you create a piece of art or a poem or a writing to them. These processes need to be individual, and we just want to encourage you to take the time to grieve your loved one, to recover from the loss, and to keep them in your life in a way that, that feels comforting to you and caring of yourself. I want to thank you so much for staying connected to us. If you are recovering from the caregiving process and going through a rough time, just know that you're not alone. Take good care and we'll see you soon.